So it's nice to see Pegamastax being portrayed pretty accurately here and showing an important feature of the group that shows that many types of dinosaurs probably had feathers in them. Despite the large size of the animal and the fact that it's dwarfing even the Megalodon, uh, it is something real in the fossil record. It's something that we know about and have evidence of. So the first dinosaur we're looking at here is called a Parasaur, which I assume is the game's shorthand for Parasaurolophus, which is a pretty well-known type of duck-billed dinosaur. Parasaurolophus is known for the backwards-pointing tubular crest coming off its skull, which we're seeing here kind of covered in some horns and a little bit of a membrane. I'm tempted to say that none of this stuff is right, and we do know that Parasaurolophus didn't have some of these things. It's got some horns on the shoulder that it definitely wouldn't have had. But a lot of aspects of the appearance of dinosaurs in real life are actually a matter of a lot of debate and a lot of continual discovery. So I'm aware of some work going on right now that suggests that there was a lot more going on with hadrosaur crests, like the tubular crest of Parasaurolophus, than we usually think. And it's very possible that these animals would have looked very different in real life than we think they would have based only on their bones. Parasaurs and other Ornithischian dinosaurs like them, these large hadrosaur duck-built dinosaurs, are usually portrayed in media as being very, very timid and trying to run away from any source of data. But these animals were actually incredibly large. We really don't think about how big they were, but almost all of them were larger than a modern elephant. And I think that they were probably similarly territorial and capable of defending themselves. The large flat tail that a lot of these hadrosaur dinosaurs had would have been a devastating weapon if they used it to hit something, especially the size of a person. It would kill you if it made impact. So I think it would be nice to see the game making these animals fight back a little bit. I guess it is nice that the game is at least showing that it's pretty difficult to kill one of these. So here we have an animal called Carbonomies. Carbonomies is a real type of fossil turtle, but it seems that it's here covered in a lot of spikes, probably for defense. I'm not aware of any real turtles that have this feature. There are types of mammals, actually, that had very, very hard shells-like turtles, the close relatives of armadillos, that were occasionally modified into more sorts of spiky defensive coverings. But for all turtles that I know of, these coverings are pretty flat. It's not a weapon like that. I've also never seen a turtle that's that aggressive, but, you know, it's a video game. The animals have to fight back a little bit. So this is Pegamastax. Pegamastax is a very, very primitive member of the group of dinosaurs called Ornithischians, or bird hip dinosaurs. Bird hip dinosaurs are a little bit uh, misleading in the name because they're not actually close relatives of birds. So theropod dinosaurs are very closely related, but the Ornithischian dinosaurs are named based on a very superficial resemblance of the bones of their hips, not anything that's actually related to their common ancestry. This is a very primitive member of the Ornithischian group that's characterized by the presence of very large canine-like teeth at the front of their jaws that we think they use defensively. One really cool detail about Pegamastax and other Hypsilopodontids, though, is that we do have evidence that they were covered in some very primitive feathers that might have formed quills that they used for defense and display. So it's nice to see Pegamastax being portrayed pretty accurately here and showing an important feature of the group that shows that many types of dinosaurs probably had feathers. So we have Megalodon now. Megalodon is a very famous species of prehistoric shark. So its scientific name is actually Ototus, so its full name is Ototus Megalodon. Megalodon used to be thought to be an extinct great white shark, one that was about two or three times as large, but otherwise very similar to a great white shark. Megalodon is very famous now, especially in cryptozoology circles, because there are a lot of people who think Megalodon still exists. There's absolutely no evidence for this. And one of the best ways that we know this is that Megalodon tended to live in shallow waterways. That's especially where it tended to breed. We have a lot of fossils of baby megalodons from coastal area. And so it couldn't have possibly lived its whole life in the open ocean like some people theorize it does now. It would have had to come close to the coastlines to breed. We would know if there were 50 foot long sharks coming close to our coastal waterways in North America. So we've got some sort of giant fish here attacking a what seems to be some sort of marine naval base. Well, I doubt that any of these giant fish would have done that. There are some really, really immense fish known from the fossil record that tended to live during the age of dinosaurs. The one that I think they're trying to depict here is Leedzichthys, which is, to my knowledge, the largest fish known from the fossil record. Leedzichthys was probably rivaling a blue whale in size, so r approaching 100 feet long in size. And this depiction here in, in Ark tends to match the artistic reconstructions of scene. And so, despite the large size of the animal and the fact that it's dwarfing even the megalodon, uh, it is something real in the fossil record. It's something that we know about and have evidence of. So, 
The character here is actually riding one of the Parasaurolophus, and I think that this is one of the few animals we've seen in the game that's rideable so far that actually probably would have been in life. As a paleontologist, we always love to speculate and guess how the world would be different if dinosaurs still existed. I think that the simple answer is that humans wouldn't exist, because the entire course of evolution would have been different. But if somehow humans and dinosaurs did coexist, I think there's a lot of types of dinosaur we'd probably have tried to domesticate, either for companionship or more likely for food. And large hadrosaur dinosaurs like Parasaurolophus were probably some of the most likely candidates to be domesticated as livestock. Because hadrosaurs tended to be social, livestock animals that we raise for food tend to be herd animals because herd animals are easier to control, right? They have predictable behavior, they tend to move as a group, that's why we domesticated sheep and goats and cattle, they all move as herds, and they're easy to control with dogs and people. I think that hadrosaurs would have been a very good candidate for this sort of domestication. And given that we tend to try to ride animals we domesticate, like horses and cattle to a lesser extent, I think it's very likely that we would have been trying to ride these animals at some point as well. They're certainly large enough to support a human being, they probably could have been saddled, and the only thing that we can't really know from the fossil record is if their temperament would have allowed them to be domesticated or controlled by people. Some animals are just too wily to domesticate. There's a reason we don't really have domestic deer or domestic bison. And here we have a dodo. So, unfortunately, this clip is pretty representative of what happened to dodos. So dodos did not live during the age of dinosaurs, they lived well into historical times, right? These animals only went extinct a couple of hundred years ago. There's a common phenomenon with birds that live on small islands without predators, that they tend to become ground-dwelling, pretty unintelligent, and very trusting, right? Dodos lived on the islands of Mauritius and Reunion. They had no natural predators. Dodos were some of the only animals that were living there. They became flightless, they were ground dwelling, they reproduced very slowly, and they had no real natural fear instinct because they didn't have much to be afraid of. So when Portuguese sailors started visiting these islands in the 16th century, they found dodos to be a very, very easy source of food. And the entire species was hunted to extinction by humans for food, almost before they could be scientifically documented. There are not a lot of dodos in museum collections for study. We don't know that much about them. During the age of exploration, a lot of animals went extinct this way. Here we have an animal called Kentrosaurus. Uh, Kentrosaurus is a stegosaur, so it's a member of the same group of dinosaurs that Stegosaurus is part of. Kentrosaurus is one of these weirder animals because unlike Stegosaurus, which had a lot of plates down its back and only a couple of spikes at the end of its tail, Kentrosaurus was covered in large spikes. Long, straight weapons like this are almost always associated with defense because they tend to not impale animals and get bring them closer like teeth or claws do. They tend to be easily removable, so there's something that an animal uses as a, as a deterrent rather than as an offensive weapon been for some trying to hunt. Ah, so here we have a non-dinosaur. This is a trilobite. So trilobites are this amazingly diverse group of extinct invertebrates that lived well before the dinosaurs. They're some of the most common fossils around the world for hundreds of millions of years of its history. That's because trilobites were one of the most successful groups of invertebrates for most of the earliest part of the history of the Earth for which we have fossil evidence. Trilobites actually went extinct prior to the evolution of the dinosaurs, so they never would have lived together. But it's really, really cool to see representations of trilobites in this game. So here we have a close-up of a pterosaur wing, and we can see that this one actually appears to be depicted correctly, which is wonderful. So if we move down the animal's body, coming toward the viewer, the first joint where there's a kind of a ball toward the head of the animal is the shoulder, the next joint is the elbow, and the next joint after that green would be the wrist and the hand. However, it does unfortunately appear that they also have an additional skeletal element that I missed before that is sticking backward. This would not have been present in pterosaurs, we've never found one with that element. So mostly this is a pretty good depiction of a pterosaur wing, except for the extra bones sticking backward supporting the wing membrane that we know didn't exist in this group of animals. One other thing that I just noticed is wrong about the pterosaur is that it has teeth in its beak. So some pterosaurs did have teeth, that's not wrong for all of them, but this is specifically an animal called Pteranodon, whose name literally means wing without tooth. That is the translation of the scientific name. Pteranodon was named because it was one of these early pterosaurs that was found that had completely lost its teeth and only had a beak. It's not the only pterosaur that did this, and while some pterosaurs did have teeth, it is wrong to depict Pteranodon like this, uh, especially given that its name literally references the fact that it doesn't have them. So manticores like that are completely fictional animals. One thing that I do like about Ark as a video game is that it combines animals that we really know of from the fossil record with completely mythological things to make it all the more rich. 
So this appears to be a Sasquatch uh, or Bigfoot. So there's obviously been a tremendous amount of debate about whether these animals really exist on Earth. There's really no evidence of them. If there were large ape-like creatures living in populated areas in North America and Asia and Europe, we would have found a lot of them right now. Somebody would have hit them with their car already at the very least. And so we can be pretty safe in our knowledge that there's no Bigfoot, there's no Yeti, they're all just mythological creatures from folklore. That said, there were very giant apes in the recent past. Uh, the one usually cited as being the origin for the myth of Bigfoot is an animal called Gigantopithecus that lived in Southeast Asia very, very recently and probably came into contact with early people in the area. That said, we know that giant apes went extinct a long time ago. Most sightings of Bigfoot and the Yeti have later turned out to be misidentified sightings of bears walking on their hind legs, which happens very frequently and can be very confusing to look at. So it's understandable that people occasionally think that they're large primates, but I want to emphasize again, there is no Bigfoot, there is no Yeti, this is a mythological creature, but this is a video game, it's fine to include. In conclusion, I think that Ark is a really, really cool portrayal of a lot of different animals, especially a lot of very poorly known animals from the fossil record. Lots of video games have Velociraptor and T-Rex. Not a lot have Dilophosaurus and Pegamastax, right? These are fairly obscure animals. Their importance is mostly scientific. They've never really penetrated popular culture. And I love that Ark is able to bring these animals to a broader audience so that people can learn more about them. For more Gameology, you can follow Gameology's YouTube and Facebook pages. If you want to see more of me, you can follow me on Twitter at JGN Paleo or on a YouTube channel I've just created with some colleagues called The Skeleton Crew, where we talk about all things paleontology. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.